everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, in today's video I'm going to be talking to you a bit about a recent um, trip I made to Arundel um, on the 23rd of May. Uh, I decided to go to Arundel um, on that day as it is half term this week, it's half term now, and it was my last chance saloon before the invasion of the kids. Um, I assured I was well fed before I left by trying the new type of porridge I bought recently at Waitrose, Quaker Berry Porridge. Um, Quaker Berry Porridge, which contains, it doesn't just contain oats, it contains quinoa, um, malted barley and a few other things, and it had um, dried cranberries and dried blueberries in it. It was, um, it's okay, uh, you know, it's not amazing, as you know I'm a porridge girl, I've talked about this before, but I love, love, love porridge, porridge is the world. Um, so yeah, so I do like to try all the different porridges and different combinations. I had it with defrosted frozen berries on top. They're very versatile, um, particularly when fresh berries um, can be quite expensive and they're starting to come into season now. Um, but yeah, it, I do like to rely on um, uh, so I have frozen berries as well because they're quick to defrost and things. The porridge was quite tasty. It turned a vibrant pink colour after cooking. I also had one slice of toast topped with whole loaf peanut butter and sliced banana. I used not to like peanut butter when I was younger. Um, I think because the peanut butter I tried when I was younger tended to be the one that had quite a few um, sort of additives added and sugar and things like palm oil. It just didn't taste quite as nice. But I've, I've, I do quite like peanut butter now. Um, I get the, um, the sort of whole loaf one, which is kind of 100% nuts. So it's very healthy. I aimed to leave by 10 o'clock a.m., which I managed to do. The weather was not particularly appetising, unlike the last time I was in Arundel. The sky was grey, and later there was a persistent light rain. This gave Arundel a rather gloomy aspect, which meant that my mood was not as buoyant as it was the last few times I was in Arundel. And I have noticed um, there is a direct correlation that I've picked up on quite recently between uh, how I feel um, and the weather. And my energy levels tend to go up or down depending on the weather, um, particularly on kind of very dark days, you know, that can make me feel quite tired. Um, and I don't like very, very bright days either. There is a certain temperature and a certain um, sort of lightness level that um, is most conducive to me feeling in relatively good spirits. It wasn't like that last time I went to Arundel, but it, it, but it wasn't too... The weather was not bad either. I mean, it was grey and gloomy, but it wasn't humid. Like, lately it's been very, very humid, which hasn't been very good for me mentally. But it wasn't too bad last Thursday in the sense it wasn't too humid. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't like as nice a day as it was the last time I'd went. So I wasn't like full of energy. As, uh, I was a bit more subdued, but I still had a good time. Uh, on arrival, I had a brief look at an art exhibition. I was the only person looking around and I felt a bit uncomfortable when one of the chatty women running the exhibition struck up conversation with me. Immediately up went my mask and I tried to speak carefully and eloquently, pronouncing my words well and trying to act the role of an interested and respectable young woman. The lady began the conversation by saying, You're very quiet. Are you with anyone? I told her I was on my own and had travelled to Arundel by train. The lady asked me if I paint myself. No, I told her. I just like looking at art, but I spend a lot of time in the kitchen cooking. But, so, um, the interaction, uh, I think I carried off the interaction pretty well. Um, because, like, in those short-lived kind of scenarios, there is quite a clear code of conduct. I didn't know these women. I, you know, the role was quite defined. I was a customer looking around. Um, you know, it, it was very basic level interaction that I can pull off reasonably well. So people won't work out there's anything different about me. They'd probably be positively surprised if I told them I was autistic because I look social. I was smiling. I was joining in a conversation. I was, um, you know, I, I guess it was kind of, to an extent, sort of small talk. Um, and, yeah, and I think I did a pretty good job of it. I mean, I'm saying it's myself. Obviously, I'm not an outside observer, but I think I did pretty well. Um... And, but in these masking situations, I do feel quite tense because I really, really don't want anyone to work out there's anything different about me. Um, this leads to a lot of conflict because why should autism be something that you should feel you have to hide? Um, you know, it shouldn't, should it? I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with being autistic, but you sort of, like, feel that you just don't want people to find out or, like, sense there's any difference because people hold, like, you, you don't know what people are going to think about it. Like, I don't want people to pity me. I don't want people to feel sorry for me. I don't want people to kind of, like, trivialise it or, 
you don't and people could be quite negative about it and 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 I, I think too deeply about what other people might be thinking and this is a problem and it's developed quite recently because when I was a kid I just didn't care at all and it's kind of gone the other extreme now where I'm kind of like hyper aware of it and I just don't want anyone to think negative negatively of me so it kind of makes me feel very tense and because obviously like social stuff is kind of all an act for me and I could pass put on the act very well but I don't have the inner connection um and it is it, so it does even in this short-lived interaction, although I, could put, although I could carry it off pretty well, I think, um, there was still some degree of tension, which these ladies wouldn't have picked up because I'm very good at hiding it. Um, but I think also, because I wasn't actually in my hometown, I was in Arundel, um, I I think uh, that made me feel a little bit more anonymous and, and kind of more able to mask, because I find that when I'm, like, where I live... Um, I, I, it can be harder for me to engage with people, um, I think because, I'm not entirely sure why, but it might just be because I'm kind of more putting my barriers up around me, because I want to maintain my anonymity and be private, and I don't want people to get too close, because, like, it's too oppressive, whereas when you're in another town, like, I, none of these people know me, it's kind of like, I, I sort of become a bit more kind of social, maybe, or a bit more able to mask, I don't know, because you can kind of bask in your anonymity a little bit more, maybe. I don't quite know what that's about. I don't know if any of you experience this, this sense that in some situations you can mask better than in other situations, and that maybe if you're around people you don't know, it's easier, or if you're, is it easier around some people than others? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Um, so, sorry, I'm really distracted by noise, sensory, so stuff. It's very distracting. If, I, if I'm coming across a bit, I am trying really, really hard, but I am distracted right now. Um, what was I saying? I hate it when I hear noise, it's really annoying. It happens all the time. Yeah, anyway, um, she asked if I, if I intend to train as a cook. Oh no, I said I'm just an amateur cook. I thought that was quite a good line of mine. Um, I was quite pleased with that. Um, I then noticed a particularly captivating oil painting of Arundel Castle. I told the lady that I particularly liked this painting, that my eye was drawn to it. This pleased both ladies, as one of them was the artist herself. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, unwitting uh, social kudos there. I managed to score a point. Yay me. I did feel a little bit um, tense, by the way, when the lady asked me if I planned to train as a cook. Because I, because that, at that point, like, inner conflict emerges because I know that I can't work and that I'm disabled. And they, these women don't know that, obviously. But again, it's like a societal expectation. And because they probably saw me as this very well-to-do, kind of, like, respectable <laughs> young woman, I don't know. Um, I think that's ha probably how I can appear to some people. Um, possibly coming across as young again my years, because I'm 30, I think many people are very surprised when I talk about my age, and they probably saw me as maybe a student or something like that, because that's what often people do. And, like, again, because I appear so respectable and, like, come across so normal, quote-unquote normal, I don't like that word, I'm just using it in inverted commas, um, I think people, you know, guess expectations then can be put on me, and I take on the burden inside, and I feel this conflict because they don't know the real me, and it feels like a secret. Even though I don't know these people, so in theory it shouldn't matter, but it does matter to me. Um, but she then gave me an information card about the upcoming Arundel Arts Festival, which includes musical and theatrical events. I did tell the women that I was not keen on crowds, but that I would give it some thought. That was me masking. You know, it's a polite thing to do, isn't it? You know, you, you, you try and express an interest. You know, I've read enough psychology books to know this. You know, I, so I can carry off the mask quite successfully, but it's all learned, you know, it's all academic, it's all intellectual. I haven't picked up these things like I guess neurotypical people do, like naturally. It's just something I've learned very, very well over time. So this is the sort of thing you're supposed to do in social situations, so I can carry it off quite well, at least for short periods of time. Um, so because my mask was firmly on, I was eager to appear politely interested, and I thanked them and left. Now, when I said... Um, Thank you very much, as I left. I was internally aware how contrived it sounded. It came out, it came out in a sort of well-to-do high voice I carefully used in masking situations. I don't know if any of you notice your voice changing in masking situations, but I noticed that my voice changes a lot anyway. So this is my video voice. I've got another voice that I have for the phone. Um, I've got voices that I have for like my, people that I know well, like, say, the very few friends I have, um, or acquaintances, or, like, support workers. I have a voice for them. Um... 
and then I have the voice I'm like using my dad and my brother and um, then I've got like and then when I'm asking like people I don't know very well or when I'm really really trying very very hard to appear normal my voice sometimes goes very very high like almost like a little girl sometimes well I don't know if it comes across like a little girl but I have been told by some people in the past my voice sounds quite young so I think sometimes and I think that's in masking situations my voice sometimes does go a lot higher and maybe it's because like when I'm doing videos and stuff my voice is lower because I'm feeling more confident and sure of myself I don't know um, so it might be to do with that, like when, when your, when your voice goes high, it can be a sign of like lack of confidence. That's what I've read in some psychology books anyway. So I don't know if that, if that applies to me, but, um, I obviously when I'm in, I'm in masking situations, I'm not actually particularly confident. I might appear confident, but inside I'm like, oh, I'm really tense. So I think my voice can go a little bit higher. Maybe I'm kind of trying too hard to appear just like a sort of nice young woman. So my voice goes higher to kind of fill that role. I don't know. But I did. I was aware how contrived it sounded when my voice went up quite high. That might also be why some people think I'm very, very young. It might not just be my appearance. It might also be something to do with my voice. I don't know. It might be a whole thing. So let me know what you think about that, whether your voice changes in certain situations. I mean, I know obviously this happens for everyone, neurotypicals as well. I mean, this is a normal thing. But maybe in autism, it's just we're more aware of it because the masking is more conscious and a lot more stressful. So we just have to be more aware of it. Also, it tends to cause more internal alienation, maybe, because it's we're just more aware of it. Um... So, so the lady's probably just saw me as a very polite young woman and they would have had no idea how scripted and staged the interaction was for me. I wish that I had been left to peacefully look at the pictures without needing to engage socially, although as the interaction was minimal, I could maintain the mask without too much effort. Generally, the mask can be maintained in very brief interactions with shop staff of this nature because I can draw upon a very basic script I've picked up over the years for watching others engage in this sort of chat. I could, to some extent, hide behind my anonymity... And as a customer, my role was clear, which helped. I then walked to the Swanbond Lake Lodge Cafe, where I've been before. I was keen to challenge myself by trying something new from the revolving cake stand. A new food each time I go to Arundel is my motto, in order to avoid giving in to my, my autistic fear of the new and to keep my mind as agile and adaptable as it can possibly be within the constraints of my condition. This time I opted for a Belgian chocolate cake and an Americana black. I sat on a different picnic bench to last time, a bench which gave me slightly more privacy. Unfortunately, I was disappointed by the cake. It tasted rather well stale and dry, which made me feel nervous. I did not finish eating it because it was not that appetising, and I did not even touch the chocolate icing. This experience then triggered my hygiene-related OCD... Because I worried about how fresh the cake was and whether it would make me ill. I feel quite, it is quite difficult talking about OCD. And at some point I really should do a video on it. Because there's a lot of stigma around OCD. And I'm unlucky enough to have OCD on top of the autism. Which is kind of nature's idea of a little bit of a sick joke really. Uh, as if my life isn't hard enough already. I have OCD as well. Um, but yeah, one can't help having OCD. It's a brain based problem. And people who trivialise it or don't understand it, that's only because they've not experienced it themselves. But still, it does hurt me when people don't understand it. And I do find it quite hard talking about it. Because I know, like, obviously these thoughts are quite irrational. But that's not the point. In OCD, you have them anyway. Internally, I try to reason with these thoughts by telling myself this would be very unlikely and that this is a cafe I trust and I've been to many times with no ill effects. Eventually, the thought subsided after I distracted myself with a trip to two bookshops. I also reasoned that although it was a disappointing experience, and that I had unwittingly wasted money by buying something I did not like, the experience had also been positive. I mean, it is important to try and look at the positives. I do find it quite difficult sometimes, but it's something I really do try very hard to do as far as I'm able. It was positive because I tried something new, and this would help to build my confidence more generally, even if this was not immediately apparent. As the saying goes, when you are dealt a lemon, always look for ways in which you could turn that lemon into lemonade. Turn the bitter into something sweet. Bittersweet, as the saying goes. So it's a bittersweet experience, but we need to focus on the sweet element of the bittersweet experience, I think. Not just the bitter. I'm always pleased when I discover something new that is connected to my interests. And when I was in the independent bookshop, I came across a book called The Doctor's Kitchen. The Doctor's Kitchen, I'll put the link um, below by Dr. Rupi, who is a general practitioner in the UK, on the NHS. I consigned the title to memory so that back home I could Google the book. To my delight, I later discovered that there is even a website. And I'll put the link to the website below. And it contains healthy and easy to prepare recipes. I really, really want to read the book. You can actually get it at the library, so that's cool. 
I've put a book on my reading list. Also, while I was in Arundel, I briefly popped inside a traditional tea room down a high street. The tea room was very small, and as I had never been inside before, I do not feel confident enough to order any food or drink there and then. The tea room is adjacent to the Palant of Arundel Food Shop. The place smelled of tea cakes, which made me feel warm and homely, and I told myself that on my next trip to Arundel, I would try and challenge myself to eat there. Nothing beats a toasted tea cake or scone with tea. Finally, I popped inside the Whole Food store, where I bought a, char of, a jar of chicory drink and a new tisane to try, orange and coconut tisane. I was intrigued by the chicory, as I had never tried it before, but I had read that it was a popular drink in the past, during a visit to a local museum some time ago. I left Arundel earlier than during my last visit because it was wet and gloomy. Back home I tried for chicory. The chicory smelled amazing. It's got a very sort of sweet scent. You make it up half hot water, half frothy milk. I fell in love with the drink straight away. Its smooth velvety texture was combined with a slightly sweet taste, reminiscent of caramel and vanilla, or slightly sweetened coffee. Chicory is naturally decaffeinated, so it's a good drink to have in the late afternoon or evening. My earlier disappointment was therefore transformed into a positive. Because if I had not gone to Arundel, I would not have bought that chicory. I would not know that I like a chicory drink. So a whole new world has opened up for me by going to Arundel. Um, and I've got the chicory here to show to the camera. It is really, really very, very nice. Have any of you tried chicory drink? Do let me know. And it's well worth trying if you haven't. I highly recommend it. If you like coffee, it's similar to coffee. It tastes a bit like sweetened coffee, but a lot nicer. And it's naturally decaffeinated. The other thing I bought in Arundel, um, not on my last trip, but on a previous trip, I haven't tried it yet, was this um, from um, Palant of Arundel. It's Olive Branch Chunky Tapenade. I got that from Palant of Arundel, which is an artisan food shop. As you know, I love food. It's my major interest, you know... It, it's my world basically as you know in autism we do have our special interest well food happens to be mine so I, I'm very into good food and trying all the different foods I like collecting food yeah trying it so this one here is Kalamata olives with fig and mint so I hope to try that at some point apparently it goes very well with cheese so yeah so I had a very very good time in Arundel all in all and um you know it although there were some negative experiences it generally uh, amounted to a positive all in the end. And I do hope to go there again very, very soon. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video today. And I will be back next week. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to talk about next week. Um, I'm, you know, it all depends what happens in a week between now and then. I do intend to do a book review on that book about foreign words. Uh, a book I bought in Arundel, as one of you wanted me to do that. Um, I'll, I'll do that when I finish the book. So it might take a little bit of time. But as soon as I've finished it, I'll do that video. Um... And yeah, I, as I say, next week I'm not sure what I'll talk about because it all depends. But um, I will be speaking to you very soon anyway and I look forward to that. So thanks for watching.